Well, what we have approved right now is that the legislation in Europe have allowed us to certify the level 3, where we take the liability for a level 3. When you're in driving in, in, a, in a traffic jam on the highway, we are the ones who are liable when you drive there. You can release the steering wheel, you do not need to put your hands back. We are able to prove it that we can make this possible. And we're working now with Thor that is here in California to do the same thing. I can see where the OS's are going, but the processors, some of the software, doesn't support the vision. What are some of the things that you guys, or at least you're tasked with, to kind of fix that? What we're tasked with is to make sure that we have a standardized architecture, so that we don't need to fight the fight in 10 different locations in the vehicle, right? So we have, have that to, to, to start with. The second piece of it is, of course, getting the most out of the hardware. There's always a hardware limitation. No matter how much in my world I've put in, uh, there's, at the end of the day, of course, you want more. So having control of the architecture also makes you possible to optimize you know, what kind of software you put in there and how much you want to get out of it. When you say that you want to control the architecture mm -hmm. as well as the hardware, whether it's an EQS or, let's say, this upcoming A-Class we've been talking about all day, is the hardware, at least from a UX perspective, going to be the same at all levels of Mercedes, or would it change depending on whether it's the fancy one or the cheap seats? It's going to be the same architecture, but we have chosen the supplier so that, uh, for the chips so that we can scale within that, because of course we can't fit the biggest screen in an A-Class. It just mm -hmm. doesn't fit physically, so you don't need that kind of graphical performance in, in that level of vehicle, like you have it in an S-Class, for example, where we can fit a much bigger screen. The EQS, which has the hyper screen. I mean, that's a huge piece of glass with three screens behind it. What type of hardware, in terms of like chips would you have behind that to support that kind of real estate? Right now, it's, it's populated by, by two different computers, and now when we come into the MBOS that we're going to launch in, uh, mm. in 24, there's going to be one computer that is behind driving all of that. What's the benefit of going to the one computer? We can control the flow and the experience across all the screens much, much better. We have one central part where we can then give the one customer experience. We have then standardize and pick uh, the chips that is going to be the, doing the communication, and mm -hmm. that's the sh same supplier for regardless if we're talking about ADAS or if we're talking about infotainment or body. Mm -hmm. So that is standardized. Mm -hmm. And then we have picked the supplier per domain that is the leader in that domain mm -hmm. in order to give us the best performance in either in graphics or we call it in, in safety, security, and in, in ADAS. Earlier we were talking, and you had said you're going to be introducing or bringing in a gaming engine to the MBOS. Now, I'm a tech guy, I came from the tech world, I kind of understand what that does, but what is like the real world benefit you're hoping for in adding a gaming engine to something that's 5,000 pounds and drives down the road at 80 miles an hour? What the game engine does is that gives us the possibility to really do 3D graphics in a natural, rich environment. Just like you have your kids or you know, when you play yourself the game in the gaming industry, you basically can go into the worlds, uh, into the, in many games in, in the future. Mm -hmm. But what we want to create is the future which is right ahead of you. So if you're driving in a city, you should see this, uh, the skyscrapers or basically the football field or the turn realistically on the screen before you get there, making this as a safer experience because you actually can see exactly where you're supposed to have your turn and of course it looks graphically exciting. Mm -hmm. You know how you can do the pinch to zoom on an iPad and it works very quickly when you have a good internet connection, but in a lot of cars, no matter how fast the processor is today, it's kind of delayed. Is it the gaming engine that would help that or a faster processor or both? It's a combination of both, mm -hmm. but clearly the graphic engine gives us the capabilities to do this. Now, marrying that together with the hardware, picking the right hardware with the right horsepower so that actually you can run this game engine mm -hmm. in the right speed that you need to get the pixels to, to be presenting this world, that's mm -hmm. the trick. We're going to launch this in our uh, MBOS in 2024. So with the new A-Class? The right car we're going to announce later. <laughs> He's the boss of the operation, but he still won't tell me this information. <laughs> um, so let's go a little further down the road here. What are some of the other ideas, maybe not ideas, but what, where, what, you, what, how can you add to the ecosystem of what is essentially an OS that you are building from scratch? Where do you see that going beyond 2024? So we're not building it from scratch. We're 
taking control of the architecture and we're taking control of the integration, but we're using many, many standards. So we're using standards on how we do communication layer. We like use what standards? Well, in automotive, we use AutoSAR, for example, that's one of the standards. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the communication inside Ethernet is another standard. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going into when we come to our uh, autonomous driving, there's certain standards we need to fulfill. In each of the domains, we talked about four domains previously. Mm -hmm. We talked about infotainment, uh, autonomous driving, body, and then powertrain. Mm -hmm. Each of them are actually using different let's say, OSs mm -hmm. uh, uh, inside there. So for example, on, on our infotainment side, we're using Linux. And yes, we have Android apps in there, but we're basing it on some standards in, in Linux. When we come to the autonomous driving space, this is a different operating system, different standards we're using there. When you go into the vehicle, when you call it the powertrain uh, drive line, for example, on, on the electric motors, it's a different there. So what we mean with the operating system, it's not just the one piece which you refer to as Microsoft or Windows or, mm -hmm. or Linux. It's really the entire envelope. So it's a ship to cloud system, mm -hmm. and we use standards in inside of that. It's a very much different standard if you have an infotainment stack compared to you have the um, autonomous driving. So autonomous driving is driven by ISO 26262. You have to fulfill this. Mm -hmm. That is not applicable in another domain. Was there a discussion inside before you went down this road of do we do this in-house or do we base it on something else? Was there ever that like fix, sell, or buy discussion? That discussion is ongoing. So we're always buying, we're always partnering, we're always working with standards. But what was never up for debate is that we wanted to have control of the user interface, user experience, and we wanted to have control over how we are then communicated with our customers in a two-way communication. And we did not want to give up that possibility to have that two-way communication and doing it in our way, in the Mercedes way. So what would be a good example of something that goes out to a third-party relationship and then something that actually stays inside with Mercedes-Benz? Well, of course, third parties. We have uh, contracts uh, where we get the uh, Android apps. That is definitely something that is a contract and we're downloading them or making the customer able to choose what they're going to download. Uh, also, when it comes to when we, for example, are getting our contracts for uh, having the, the Linux kernel set up in, in the way that we are needing it to be, it's mm -hmm. a contract, we're not doing Linux <laughs> mm -hmm. or trying to pull it off the open source ourselves. Mm -hmm. So many standards, many partnerships. You guys brought uh, these S-classes that are fitted with a level three driver's assistance. Right. What kind of, let's say, blue sky opportunities are presented to you now that, say, a California or an Arizona might approve you guys into level three? Well, what we have approved right now is that the legislation in Europe mm -hmm. have allowed us to certify the level three, where we take the liability mm -hmm. for a level three. When you're in driving in, in, a, in a traffic jam on the highway, we are the ones who are liable when you drive there. You can release the steering wheel. You do not need to put your hands back when on the wheel. When you say liable, you mean like well, there's no like release when you, you know, when you get in the car and it says confirm. It's you're not releasing liability from the manufacturer. No, we're Actually, not. It goes to you guys. Yeah. So, and that's mandated by the governments. We have now been able to work with the government to get that regulation in place. Other OEMs, other manufacturers could can do the same now if they're able to prove it. Mm -hmm. We are able to prove it that we can make this possible. And we're working now with authorities here in California to do the same thing, which is a big difference to our level two system. We also have a level two system. This level two system you can do a lot with, mm -hmm. right? or automatic lane change oh, and I've so used it forth. Here, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's different. You are liable. As a driver, you must take control and be ready to take control all the time. When we have a level three system, mm -hmm. when you are in a traffic jam and driving up to the speed limit that, that we have defined for the system, you basically do not need to put your, your hands back on the wheel. And when you say prove it to a municipality or government, what's involved in proving it to them? That is a long process of making sure that uh, imagine. the oh, amount of data yeah. that we need to put on there. That's why you don't have any hair. <laughs> the drives, I lost that a long time ago. Uh, the drives we need, we actually need to, of course, to take them on there and, and find uh, find the, the, uh, the traffic jams. It's going to be much easier here because it's no trouble getting any yeah. traffic jam here. Absolutely. <laughs> much harder in Michigan. Yes. <laughs> 
Okay, so this is the point of the episode where we turn this around to the audience. Now, you've never been on the show before, but what I like to do is close these episodes yeah. by, by soliciting feedback from the audience, because we've talked about a lot today. And I'd like to have you come back on the show when we talk more, get, probably get more in depth on that operating system when you can actually show us more. But I think one of the things, one of the questions we should ask for is some of what does the audience think should be in that ecosystem, that third party ecosystem? Because it's clear you're going the Apple route in controlling the architecture. But what, can, what kind of opportunities would they want to see moving forward, not just in level two autonomy, but level three as well? Let us know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I want to leave you with one fun fact. This man, next time he's on the show, we're going to be doing this smoking cigars. Until I see you in the next episode, bis später. <laughs>